Hello, we are here for Professor Alexander Dugan of Moscow State University's continuing uh, lecture series on ethnosociology. Uh, and the lecture today will focus on the Laos, which is an ethnosociological taxonomy for the people. Professor Dugan? Now we are going to speak uh, about a kind of society that is not directly ethnic society. So we are going beyond the ethnos as a, a simplest kind of society and we are coming to a sort of derivative of uh, ethnic group. Uh, when we have spoken about ethno-kinetic, uh, we have mentioned that the reason of the irreversible changes in the ethnic society is the manifestation of the figure of the other that gives to the ethnic community a kind of discontinuity, uh, a kind of catastrophe, uh, of something that um, it, uh, could be regarded as a process of intrusion of something completely and radically, radically different from the ethnos itself. It is a kind of first impulse to move, to put in the movement, to be put in the movement for ethnic group. Uh, and that is the starting point of the uh, split of the ethnic homogeneity and a kind of entrance of the ethnos and the dramatic phase of its existence. The ethnos as such, as ethnos, lives always in a kind of eternity or in the cyclic return of the same. And that is not only one of the features of the ethnos, but that represents the essence of the ethnos as such. And when this state of being is split uh, under gas, the catastrophic change, irreversible change, uh, we are dealing with the origin of the linear historic time, of the time that is not embedded in the frame of the cyclic repetition of the same. So it is a kind of open time or actual time, the time that where uh, the beginning, the origin, the source and the end uh, the final point, the goal, don't coincide. That is very important and very catastrophic movement. So, we could consider that as the premise for the birth of the first derivative of ethnic group, first social form of post-ethnic society. But this post-ethnic society is not only something completely different from the ethnos. It is different, but in the foundation, in the base of the society, ethnos, ethnos is still present.
So it is a kind of drastic change of the identity uh, obtaining the process of obtaining, of obtaining new identity but with conservation and preservation of the previous identity on the on some basic level so that is post ethnical society so it this post ethnical society is organized around the figure of the other. This, this figure, figure of the other, it is not, uh, is not only the projection of otherness beyond the ethnic society, but also it is a kind of projection or implosion of the ethnos in itself. So it is a kind of drastic separation of the ethnic group, at least on two halves. So instead of the unity, holistic unity of the whole, we are dealing now with divided unity, with two separate parts of the same. So there is a kind of duality. We are uh, entering in the real, in the field of the duality. Duality that is not integrated successfully and fully in the state of the unity. Unity is split and uh, after that we are living in a split social world. The most common event that gives the start for this qualitative change of ethnic society is uh, a process of the control of one ethnic group over the other. So the first derivative of ethnos, dramatic and split, uh, uh, splitted, is the result of the conquest of one ethnic group over the other. But in the situation of inter-ethnic wars, this is not realistic solution because the men of the enemy, uh, the tribe of the enemy, are annihilated or eaten in the course of inter-ethnic wars and the ch children and the women are assimilated, so integrated and there is no other. The only, only trace of the exterminated and integrated other are the slaves the slaves that were considered to be a living dead. So a kind of non-existing existing unities, depraved of any rights and depraved of any special identities. Identity. They were considered to be nothing, living subhuman nothing in the social world of ethnic group. They these slaves were, no, were not others, they were not representatives of the other. They were a kind of nothing embedded in the whole. So they didn't represent any challenge to the unity. But there is a kind of other, completely other conquest when the defeated 
men are not exterminated, but they are submitted for the rule of the conquerors. So it is a completely new situation that could be imaginable only in very special ethnic interactions. The common ethnos, ethnos as such, could not give the possibility for such kind of conquest. The conquest we are uh, speaking of is very particular one. And to, in order to, to imagine that, we need from the beginning conceive two asymmetric ethnic group. One ethnic group of sedentaries, of uh, the agricultures, uh, peasantry, that is ethnic group of more or less peaceful existence and completely different, organically, structurally different ethnic group that should be nomad and that rep should represent a kind of pastoral culture. So they, uh, they should be uh, nomad masculine tribes uh, with very special social characteristics. We need to consider completely different so society, different social structure, different uh, comparing to the normal sedentary uh, agricultural group. So uh, this pastoral society is represented by professional warriors dealing with big animals and in the process of the domestication of the big animals such as coal or bull, they, uh, these uh, representatives of uh, pastoral society, they manage to impose uh, physical and social control and the will over big and powerful organisms more powerful than human body. So they begin to exercise their will, their will over the entities, animal entities, more powerful, more the stronger than themselves. It's very important psychological point that change everything in the common life. So they manifestate a kind of uh, a will for the power and the concentration that transcends all analog similar tendencies in the peasant agricultural society ethnic society. So, it is a kind of traumatic society of the, of the pastors. And event of the conquest of these pastoral societies over sedentary societies of the peasants precisely is a starting point for creation of the first derivative of the ethnos. So, the creation of a kind of new society 
with the other around it and the other inside of it. So, this kind of society is divided, socially structured, with top and bottom, with differences, with uh, relations or, or um, structured around the vertical axis. So, it is a kind of warrior society when the other is around, considered as enemy. All that is beyond this kind of society is considered to be other, but existing other. The other that should be conquered, that should be killed, that is present always. So, the enemy appears here as fundamental figure. Anime is everywhere, anime is eternal, anime is menacing always, and so the reason of the being of this society is everlasting struggle, the war, as normative form of existence. So, this is a kind of the war when the peace is only a pause between uh, the words. So, the war is the law, because around the society, outside of it, there is the real and the field of the challenges, of the aggressions, of the aggressive, negative, menacing other. So, it is a kind of exterior social consciousness, but also the other is inside of this society. In this society, the, the, the figure, figure of the other is the figure of the political elite uh, that consists from the de descendants, from the first conquerors, and that is a kind of aristocracy that is other, ethnically, socially, politically, physically, and symbolically other, comparing them with the conquered majority of the autonomous autochton population. And also for this aristocracy, the autochton population also is the other. So, the other is embedded inside of the society as a reason of divisions that uh, we could find everywhere in this society. So, that is very important because that represents new form of society that is very different comparing with the ethnic society. But, nevertheless, this new derivative society also represents a kind of unity, because it is coherent interior, in, uh, innerly in front of the exterior challenge and danger, and there is a kind of integrational movement that tries to unite both part of this society, the elite and the masses, to heterogeneous parts in a kind of construction. So, there, there is division, separation, and integration, but this integration of the different and not of the same. And that is uh, also a starting point when the slaves begin to play an important part in society, in the society, because for them, from now on, uh, there is a special social place 
because being the other, being conquered men of the different so society, they could be integrated because they are not so much different. They are different, oh, uh, of course, but not so much from the masses because the masses also are regarded uh, in the eyes of the aristocrats as well as something like, something similar to the slaves or to the domesticated animals. And that is a metaphor of the pastor, the pastor who is master of uh, the animals and the uh, king is a kind of pastor of uh, the population. So this metaphor is very important because, because it um, make the big animals and the masses something more or less equal. And of course there are differences between the uh, recognized member of the society, of the member of ethnic peasant community and the slave. But the slave obtains some social status because this the social status of the member of the peasant community is really diminished. It is not the part of the whole, it is the worse uh, part of the whole, where the best part of the integrated whole is represented by aristocracy, by the descendants of the first conquerors. Uh, that is more or less uh, conceptualized in the con context of so-called Eroberung theory in German, proposed by um, uh, Leopold Gumplowicz as well as by uh, Friedrich Ratzel, and that is accepted in generally by most important uh, historic uh, historians of the uh, ancient and archaic societies. So it is more or less uh, uh, obvious um, idea of the origins of the complex society and of the um, sources of social stratification. It is uh, called also by Gumplovic as um, allogen elite theory. So, the, uh, according to him, to Gumplovic, uh, every elite in every society has heterogeneous ethnical origin. So, aristocrats are descendants of the first conquerors. So they possess always different signs of this uh, ethnical and cultural and historical differences. So, how we could call this post-ethnic society described by us in uh, previous words. So, I propose to call it by Greek term laos. Laos, that signifies people. This term, Greek term, laos, the people, and maybe also a kind of equivalent for German word folk, people, folk. It is not ethnic because Laos theoretically should consist from two ethnic groups, not from one. Ethnos is a society that consists from one ethnic group and Laos 
is the not simply but complex society consisted from at least uh, at least from two different ethnic groups. One of them is the ethnic groups of conquerors and the other the ethnic group of con conquered. So that is very important difference. And the use in the ancient text, Greek text, of the word Laos is also very significant because it is used when uh, the author needs to describe a kind of organized mob. So it is not a kind of organic ethnicity of genos or philas or ethnos but it is a kind of mob and uh, often uh, the armed mob, the, the mob with the weapons. So it is very, very good uh, for to describe and define uh, first derivative of post-ethnic society. First version of post-ethnic society, um, that is um, Laos. We could call it the people in the very specific sense. So, the people in our terminology is not the same as the ethnos, because the ethnos is simple, the people is complex. The ethnos is holistic, the people is structured by different and heterogeneous elements. Uh, the ethnos doesn't know the figure of the other and the Laos, the people, is based on this figure that is most important constitutive element outside as well as inside of this form of society. So, in this sense, the people is particular ethno-sociologic category that is not ethnic category, because there is the ethnos inside of the Laos, Laos, but not only one ethnos, but at least two or more, more than two ethnic group inside of the so social unity. We could also describe people as ethnosociologic category as historical entity or historical phenomenon because ethnos in its own eyes is not historic. There is no history inside of ethnos because the repetition of the same everlasting eternal present or return of the seasons is not history as well as the coming of the spring or the summer or the autumn could be or the winter could be considered to be event. Uh, what, uh, what is in nature could not be event, could not be historical event because it is a kind of necessity, the manifestation of the necessity. So the ethni ethnic group, the ethnos, lives inside of this necessity of the repetition of the whole that is granted. And in the cases when it is not granted, it is easily repaired by the shaman, healer, witch doctor that could easily uh, restore 
uh, the necessity, if there is a kind of anthropic challenge to it. But in the case of the people of the uh, Laos, we are dealing with historic entity. So that is a kind of history. And that is the reason why we are dealing with actual time, where the time of linear nature, where the time open time. And so maybe the people is moved by the will to restore lost paradisiacal state of the ethnic existence. But it not, not simply, and maybe it is not possible. So it put, people put these two moments when the dramatic split was effectively integrated, overcome in the source time, in the golden age of the time of the sources and in the eschatological perspective. So, uh, the history is between the beginning and the end. In the beginning and in the end, the people could place these uh, paradisiacal integration. So, the ethnic, ethnic uh, form of existence, restored and repaired whole, perfect whole, uh, whole, perfect holistic unity, without the figure of the other. But between these two limits, between these two uh, points, there is the history, there is an open actual time that goes from the Golden Age to the final Messianic Restoration. And people is always between, in between of this process. So that is the sense of the open history, that is the sense of the event, of something that is not necessarily necessarily repeated that is something that is it is not granted that could be obtained or could not be obtained so that that demands completely new vision of human being so we are in need here in the people of the hero, the hero as a tragical figure that historically fight for the restoration of the lost divinity, of the, uh, of the lost uh, golden age. And this is very risky, dangerous exploit to restore that, that is not granted as in the ethnic society, it should be fight for. And this fight of the hero is represented sociologically in the elite. Elite is a hero. Elite is dramatic. Elite is tragic. So elite is heroic level of the society as Laos. And the masses is under heroic, under human uh, part of the society that is not um, is not used directly in this open history. The masses in this form of post ethnic society don't participate in the creating of history. The history is made by the heroes, by the aristocrats, by the elites. 
And here we are dealing with a completely new kind of uh, human type. This human type is initially individualized, personalized. So what was considered as a quality of the whole in the ethnic society in the Laos becomes attributes of the heroic individuality. So it is a kind of personalization of the whole and a concrete human aristocratic figure. In the figure of the prince, the figure of the king, of the hero, of the prophet, of the philosopher. And now we are going to a very important point. When the Laos is born, with him immediately, simultaneously, are born the special forms of historic existence of the society. One of three forms, or two of three forms, or, or three together, but at least one form is necessary. It is or state, or religion, or civilization. So we could consider all three simultaneously or one of them. One of them is enough because when there is a state, there is a people as Laos and there is no more ethnos because ethnos never creates the, the state. The state is a form of historical existence of the complex society of the Laos, of the people. The people and the state are very close terms because the state is conscious organization of the society with the rationality, with the social structure, with uh, the vertical axis and with the historical being, historical existence. But it is not necessary to have to begin with the state. By the way, the state is always possible and is more general form of historical existence of the Laos and of the people. But it is not necessary because there could be the other kind of organization uh, and historical manifestation as religion and religion of more or less monotheistic type. So, monotheism is a kind of projection of the heroic, highly differentiated structure on the cosmical level. So, the God that is transcendent, that is the other for the world. And the world is the other for the God. And their relations are absolutely linear, vertical, because the God is the master and the world is the slave. The world uh, is uh, the uh, creature and the God is creator. So their mutual relations reflect precisely this complex society. And the god is the god of warriors, the god of the struggle against the other. And so that, that there is a kind of feudalism 
and the religion, because there are uh, the group, the church, or the chosen people that uh, is elected as a kind of warriors of the friends of the gods that should struggle against the other, uh, the other parts that don't recognize the god as their king. So there is a kind of uh, classical religious understanding of history, and religion is very, very natural form of manifestation of the people. So Jewish religion is very, very clear example of such organization of the people from the ethnic group entrance in the history and not necessarily with the state. The state was created uh, by Jewish people on some stage of its history, but it was not first or it is not considered to be the first step of this creation. The people was born before this, this state. But in the other cases, the people could be born with the state. So th there could be differences. And there is the third possibility, represented, for example, in the Greek civilization, or in the Indian civilization, or Turanic civilization, that is based not on the religious community, nor on the community of the state, because Greek civilization consisted from different uh, city-states. And at the same time, that was a kind of the unity. Uh, this unity was represented in a high sophisticated society, differentiated society. So we could here use uh, the word civilization in a cultural sense not in the sense of Oswald Spengler that uh, differentiated strictly culture from civilization. In French language this division is not, for example, current, it is not uh, obvious, as well as in, uh, in the other languages. So, speaking about civilization, we mean a highly sophisticated organization of the multi-ethnic society when the basis of the integration is not the state as such, nor religion. So there is a kind of different cultural form of integration. Exactly the same situation we have in India society where there is a common civilizational basis with different different political units inside of that and with different ethnical and with different religious units because in the Indian civilizations civilization are present up to now and uh, in the past uh, much more different religious and political entities and ethnic, obviously. But this civilization could unite them on the basis of the common philosophy or cultural identity. And we could uh, propose three figures that could incorporate in themselves, manifestate in themselves three types of the historic form of the laws for the state. This central figure as a kind of anthropological anthropologic or a kind of anthropologic norm is a hero, the warrior, or the king. So, the king, 
as a, ch a chief, a leader of the military group. So everybody in this military group of the military warriors aristocracy is chief himself and there is chief of the chiefs who is the manifestation of the human heroic struggling warrior nature. So the person of the king is a kind of eidos Greek for the people. The people is hero hero centric society. In in center of it as an absolute norm for it is a kind of warrior and hero. Hero as the uh, as representation of the other of the inner other. It is also a top of the society and the maximal point of, of the society that is a, a sum for the masses and an example to imitate for everybody else. So, we are dealing with king as heroic principle. In the case of the religion, the same role play the prophet. But the prophet is not sacerdot or shaman. The prophet is the prophet of the unknown God. The prophet is representative of something whose nature whose being and whose existence are problematic, highly problematic and transcendent. So, exactly as the political hero, the hero of the police of the state, the prophet is the religious hero who also is engaged in very dangerous spiritual battle. He is struggling as Saint Jacob with the angel or with the God. He uh, is in very he is engaged in very difficult, very dramatic, tragical situation where he could lose everything. So this figure of the prophet is heroic principle, isolated, but also a kind of example, an anthropological aidos for the religion. So it the prophet, it is new figure, shaman or sacerdote, we could find in ethnic society. But Prophet is something completely new, because he is chosen by the other. He behave himself on the behalf of the other, of the transcendental principle. So it is also the center of religion. In the case when we are dealing with the religion and the state, the king becomes the prophet. That is the case of King David in the ancient Israel. But what is a similar figure in the frame of the civilization? That is the philosopher. Philosopher is also the man who is regarded as a normative anthropological figure that is dealing with the complexity and on behalf of his own rationality, intelligence, with, on the behalf of his own possibility to put together the fragments 
of the society, of the culture, of the world. Uh, he is dealing with. So the philosopher as a kind of central figure of the civilization. So philosophic aspect of civilization could give to these complex society a kind of vertical structure. But when the, the philosopher, for example, Plato, begins to think about politics, so begin to philosoph begin to think in the term of the state, he immediately is coming to conclusion that the function of the philosopher is the same as the function of the political ruler, because we are dealing with two homogeneous, homological form of Laos. In one case, Laos manifests itself in the form of the state, in the other in the form of civilization. So when we put together state and civilization, as in the in in case of the ideal state of philosopher Plata, we receive immediately the figure of the philosopher King. But if we add, if if we add here religious aspect, immediately we we uh, we are in presence of the philosopher, prophet, king. So they could be mixed, they could be uh, merged in the one and the same, uh, in the same figure as, as for example, Solomon. Solomon, uh, Solomon uh, in the Jewish tradition, who was considered to be philosopher, who was considered to be, and who was king, and who was religious chief of the uh, ancient Jews. So that is uh, three forms of existence of the Laos and three forms of historical historic being of the post-ethnic society. And if we apply such a structure on the history of uh, the humanity, we see immediately that this concept of Laos as first derivative of the ethnic society is more common, more general in all our history. Every traditional society, except of archaic tribes or archaic um, little communities, are different examples of this Laos. So, any known historic society, or most of them, are, uh, 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 belong, to, belong to, to the same type of the Laos. It is traditional so, uh, state, traditional and the sense of pre-modern state, every pre-modern state is the form of Laos, every pre-modern state or pre-modern society generally possesses religious basis and special level of development of the civilizational Principle. So, a kind of sophisticated, more or less sophisticated culture in art, in the philosophy, in uh, different cultural aspects of being and the, in the technology and the symbolical forms created and developed by the society. So, Laos could be considered as first derivative of the ethnic society 
But and also that is very important. We could make fruitful comparison between the form of ethnos and the laws. There are some affinities and there are some differences. For example, ethnos doesn't disappear from the laws. It rests, but it knows the whole and only but only part in this case. So it is conserved, the ethnos is conserved in the frame, in the general frame of Laos, on the basic level of the society. So peasantry, agricultural com uh, communities continue to live in the golden age, but their form of living are considered by the aristocrats as something primitive, as something uh, not know, knowing yet about the other. It is not a uh, uh, kind of um, overcoming the other, but it is not over the open problem of the other, but uh, beneath that. Aristocrats of the traditional society considered the challenge of the other as something more important than possible answer that could we could find in the masses. So there is a kind of misunderstanding because the top level of the traditional society is living in the split, in the tra tragical situation and the uh, masses of the traditional society continue to live in the golden age. They you know, don't, uh, don't uh, perceive the danger. They ignore, they still ignore the, the, the appearance of the other. And so, very interesting phenomenon here. It is very important that masses in the traditional society continues to live in the situation of the golden age and they considered their proper elites a something that is sacred not in the sense of holy positive sacredness but also the sacred in the whole understanding of this of this world this is something terrible and something holy at the same time and Maybe that is a very important sociological reason why they pay the masses, they pay the taxes for the masters, for the aristocrats. They consider that as a kind of ritual annihilation, destruction of the extra products collected in the economic during in the process of economic life so that is if for example before in the ethnic conditions they destroyed um, the, um, uh, the extra value in the course of the orgasm uh, rituals. So now they give this um, uh, this part, this damned part, to their master. So that is very interesting because the masses continue to live in in the ethnic conditions, and Laos as a whole lives and above all in the, in the um, persons of the political elites in completely different historic this time situation. So here appear two parallel times, two parallel temporalities, one of them 
is pre-temporal, prehistoric, uh, ethnic, and that uh, is a characteristic of the masses. And the other is open time and histori historic existence understood by the elite and the relations, the relations, social relations uh, based on the social stratification uh, is also constructed on the basis of the deep misunderstanding of these two parts of the same society. So the people, Laos, is split on two parts that live in different cosmos. So the, if ethnos lives in the same cosmos, in the ethnic, homogeneous, holistic cosmos, Laos exists in the context of two heterogeneous cosmos. They are in kind of uh, struggle, misunderstanding, and uh, there, there could be different, different relations between them. There are two universe, universes, but these two universes in the same laws are on the other level integrated in a kind of constructed whole constructed whole that is uh, uh, consolidated by the existence of the uh, external figure of the other that gives the basis of unification this time artificial unification of uh, the society and that is a kind of game of uh, um, of the history social game that could uh, continue for many many centuries for example this game is not finished for example in hindi indian society actually because there is a kind of exchange between uh, ancient Vedic uh, Aryan in the European elite and autochthon elements of many cultural values, identities, and so on. And uh, that is not finalized because the huge part of the Indian population uh, doesn't speak Hindi. Uh, so the huge part uh, lives in the pre-Aryan uh, conditions. So the, the beams, the rays of the Aryan elite didn't reach yet the depth of the general uh, Indian masses. So, and a kind of accommodation of this Two at, uh, at, uh, at least two cosmoses, two universes uh, from each uh, to each other is not uh, finished during more than three thousands of years. So it is a kind of process of creation of the laws of existence of the laws of traditional society that is based on this accommodation of different cosmic structure of the language, values, cultural, religious, civilizational practices of the elite and corresponding and at times very contradictory or opposite values, practices, agencies, values of the masses. So, um, I've tried to give uh, an approximative vision of what in ethno-sociology 
we consider to be first social derivative of the ethnic society and that is very important to introduce in the ethnosociologic analysis the concept of the people of the Laos because if we don't make these differences between ethnic society and the people between the ethnos and the people we couldn't understand correctly many sociological aspects of the, the human history and also we could not correct, correctly explain what is going on in our own world where still exist the ethnic groups in pure or impure state as well as the traditional societies, religions, the pre-modern states and pre-modern heroic philosophic civilizations. Okay, um, so in your lecture today you proposed the idea of the concept of the Laos, the people, uh, for in ethnosociological terms as an intermediary stage between the ethnos um, and uh, the nation. Um, and you also suggested that we could speak about the Laos not only in ethnosociological terms strictly, but also in historical terms, whereas the ethnos would be uh, existing what we would say in prehistory, in tribal society, and the Laos existing what we might call the ancient world or the pre-modern world. Um, I was wondering if you could provide for us some um, concrete examples of what you would identify as, uh, as a Laos in historical terms. So, we could, uh, we, we could consider, for example, ancient states. They are the form of existence of the Laos. For example, the ancient Persian state. With, uh, strictly defined uh, ethnic and social strata and difference between the Aryan upper hand aristocracy and the other. So that was also including the reason of the permission of the incest strictly prohibited in archaic and uh, post-archaic society. The uh, uh, introduction of the incest uh, serves as a most important basis of any human society. And this introduction, uh, uh, this uh, uh, introduction of, of the incest is lifted in the uh, Iranian society because of the fear that the blood of the hero, heroic aristocracy could be uh, mixed with dirty blood of the masses. So there is a kind of dualistic vision that is basis of political organization of the society that goes against so-called social natural uh, precedes uh, for the archaic society. So that is interesting that the state uh, is based on the premises of racial duality as a kind of model for any uh, more recent kind of state. So in ancient Iran we are dealing with manifest, uh, manifestation of the extreme form of ethnic differentiation between the uh, between the upper society and lower society. But 
and a different level that is repeated in any society, in Russian history, for example, because the, the core of Russian aristocracy was from German Scandinavian origins or from Turkish uh, Turks, Khazars, or from Mongolian in the future, uh, in, in the, uh, after Chinggis Khan uh, conquests, uh, or from um, Sarmat, because there is a very important uh, uh, percentage of the Sarmats, uh, of the Scythians, in the composition of early Russian elites. At the same time, Germans and the Celtic population of the Western Europe. So, also the Achaean and Dorian people were shepherd, and Apollo, Achaean god, was represented with the lamb on its shoulder. So, that always in the world we could trace this, uh, this, this science of the shepherds of pastoral society overlapping, uh, uh, conquesting uh, the autochthon population and creating a state structure. So, in political sense, any traditional society, any pre-modern state has in its origin this ethnosociological process of, of double ethnic ethnic groups. Okay, if I could just back you up a second there because that's going to be a very controversial uh, proposal that you have made. I think it's quite interesting. The idea that incest uh, is a defining uh, characteristic of Laos in uh, terms of social stratification where you say that uh, the incest is a defining character of the aristocratic class of uh, pretty much any society uh, in these uh, pre-modern uh, terms, uh, in pursuit of a preservation of what might be considered heroic blood, is that is that right? Uh, I think that the, that is extreme, extreme example. How far we could come from the ethnic and primordial kind of the society, where incest is absolutely prohibited, prohibited. Absolutely, and with no exception, no one tribe, archaic tribe in the world could permit incest to be, and this is basis, as Levi-Strauss has shown, but this interdiction is lifted mm -hmm. in creation of some extreme form of uh, the Laos in, per, in uh, ancient Iran, but also in uh, Egypt, in Egypt, and also in some sects, religious sects, that tries to conserve their pure, uh, purity uh, the, uh, their, uh, and to avoid any kind of mixture. For example, Sabbatean Jewish sect, uh, sect of uh, 7th uh, century, that practiced uh, cases of incest, basing the permission to accomplish that on the fear of the mixture with the not unholy blood of the other. So that is a religious example where uh, no, not so much the same situation in religious culture or in uh, the, the, the context of the, uh, of, of the civilization, but in the state that was a kind of political, ethno, ethnic, ethnic political practice in extreme case. But I don't affirm that is a common, um, common uh, practice uh, in any <laughs> laws. So it's, it's possible, but could we, uh, just taking that idea a little further, could we not extend the idea and say not just incest, but in a broader sense, a kind of uh, aristocratic interbreeding and take a look at uh, pre-modern European society where aristocrats exclusively bred amongst themselves in pursuit of this. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, the, um, uh, the idea was uh, that was called uh, 
the, uh, the prohibition of hypogamic, uh, hypogamic marriage. So, in uh, the lowest, lower part of the society, of the same society, lift the persons with the bad blood. So, for the aristocrats, uh, the normal marriage was with the same uh, with the same level, maybe from the other societies, so marginatic uh, uh, marriages, so the, uh, the marriages uh, of uh, kings or uh, of the aristocrats, they uh, have had a kind of prohibition uh, to take the brides from the lower, lower uh, masses, and that was social and ethnic also practice. So maybe we could regard it incest as prohibition to mix with the lower, lower uh, groups. Mm -hmm. They, they uh, belonged according to this concept of the uh, pre-modern society to the lower human type. Mm -hmm. So that was based on the idea of the two parallel temporalities. Mm -hmm. So it is a kind to, to go from the history, to take the bride from, from, from the people, mm -hmm. from the mass, is the same as come out from the history and to um, resign from heroic mission, vocation. That, that is very interesting. And the radical case of the permission of the incest shows how far we could go in this direction. But in, in this, in our society, the problem was solved by inter, interpolitical yes. uh, marriages from aristocracy of, of other peoples. Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, as the defining point in the separation between the ethnos and the Laos, you describe as the introduction of the other, both of an external other, which uh, uh, helps create a social stratification within the society, a heroic class, um, and then also when uh, the external other is incorporated into the ethnos, um, you have a lower social stratification, uh, uh, essentially a slave class. Um, so, uh, if we take a look at it in sociological terms, we see this introduction of the other. Um, and if we take a look at it in political terms, we could talk about social stratification. But um, in historical terms, we often talk about history as essentially a uh, history of conflict, of war. Could you talk uh, then about the importance of war? The war is the state of normal existence because the other is conceived in uh, the context of history as aggressive one, as danger, and also as the death herself. That is very important. So. Uh, for the heroic conscious, consciousness, the immortality of the ethnic stage is not granted. Uh, so the hero is devoid normally from immortality. So he is under uh, uh, menace uh, of death, of di disappearance. So th th there is uh, the, uh, nothing that attacks, the nothing perso pers personalized nothing that attacks a uh, hero at the time of his existence in the world is a time of uh, the struggle with the other as with the death. So he could win the death but the other is the death. Precisely, the existence of other laws, that is concrete challenge of the death. It is uh, uh, from 
the limited nature of the consciousness of hero is represented by the field of international relations as the field of never-ending war, normal war. The war is the norm, is the, the father of the things. So all, everything is born in the war, for the war, in the, in the, after the war, in the process, the war, against the war. So that is a kind of normal, normal ambience. The war of all against all. The, 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 all against all, but uh, the, who is in the, war, in the war? That always the hero against the other. So, if, for example, and what is the message? Where, where the place of the majority of the population of, of, of the people? Where, where is majority? Majority is considered to be a kind of um, uh, something added. To, to the hero as a, a enlarged companion, something that served to him as instrument. The hero is a lonely hero. So it is not everybody against everybody, the hero against the death. But the other hero consider this hero to be his own death, as Hector and Achille, Achilles, Achilles uh, in uh, 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 Greek, uh, uh, Homeric. Epos. So that is very important. There is no a healer Hector. There is death in the person of the enemy. So it is very aristocratic form of, of struggle. Not everybody against everybody. Only hero is who is in struggle. So it's a kind of duel. So uh, it is a kind of uh, one against one. The death against the hero, hero against death. So it is a kind of aristocratic uh, battle, not modern understanding of war. That was a sophisticated intellectual war. Everybody is in state of war, but personification of the warrior is the hero, or the prophet, or the philosopher. Philosopher also is in the war against multitude. He tries to to save the multitude from its multitudinous and to bring it to the unity. So it is overcoming of the death, because multitude division is the death, philosophically seen. So it is also the war. And that is the reason why Plato called philosophers Phylax. Phylax, uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the warrior, the warrior who, uh, who the god, the god who um, is in the place of the city to, to defend the city uh, during the night and during uh, the attack of the other. So the philosopher is the god of being, of uh, um, the city of, of, of uh, the, the, the humanity. Okay, um, for uh, the Laos, we generally talk about the Laos as a sedentary society, um, whether that is in the form of uh, uh, sedentary uh, uh, settled agriculture, or whether that is in the form of a pastoral society with uh, domesticated animals. Um, but um, we also obviously have nomadic societies uh, existing throughout pre-modern times uh, all the way up from the Huns, uh, the uh, Sarmites, all the way up to uh, uh, perhaps uh, the, the, the final would be the, the Hordes, uh, Genghis Khan, Tamerlane, etc. Um, obviously they exist in the presence of the other because their lives are also defined uh, by uh, to a great deal by the conquest or the um, uh, uh, rating of uh, settled societies. So is there some special conditions uh, for nomadic societies within the Laos or do they fall under the largely the same rules as the uh, settled societies? We could consider the nomadic society as uh, ethno, the last stage of ethnokinesis. Ethno mm -hmm. So that is the kind of the ethnos that isn't 
uh, that is put in the movement. So the, 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 the ethnos, normally sedentary, uh, begins to move. And beginning to move, it begins to change. And it enters in the stage of instability, fragility, volatility. So the nomadic shepherd society are volatile. So they are open, they're instable, and but there could be pre-Laos, pre-state, but they uh, bear inside of them the possibility and virtuality of the state. They, they were state constructor, naturally uh, predisposed to construct uh, this state, but without conquest of the sedentary, sedentary masses, they could not construct. They could not construct the state over their animals. That is a kind of preparation of the state. It is first stage. So they managed to, to master, domesticate the big animals, but it is a kind of pre laos It is ethno kinetic okay. so stage of the ethnos, the mm -hmm. last stage before on the eve of creation of the Laos. So a kind of a permanent stage of flux between the ethnos and the Laos. Exactly. And then um, would you also say then that if this um, nomadic society is in this permanent state of flux, then either conquer uh, or are assimilated uh, in w w uh, even if they conquer, it often involves assimilation into a settled society that then they become uh, a, a, a new merged Laos. Either yes, uh, often a ruling class. Yes. Uh, exactly. They uh, also they uh, they they form the Laos precisely to be a big settlers or to be linked um, by some or some. Some form in some form to the settled society, they uh, begins to play the role of the ruling class, and little by little they also become settled, sedentary. Yes. But they conserve their attitude uh, because being warriors and being more uh, light for. To move more moving, more mobile, uh, mobile more mobile than uh, the settlers. So they conserve a kind of their nomadic fishers mm -hmm. and their way of life and the social practice, and uh, it adheres to the war, to, to the war as lifestyle. Yes. Um, when we're speaking, uh, you're speaking about the Laos and you define it uh, uh, in three uh, essential categories of which uh, at least one is necessary. The religion, the state, and the civilization. Um, uh, it is an interesting category of the state when we're talking about um, what in historical terms would be uh, ancient in the, the pre-modern world. We generally think in political science terms of the state uh, as, a, as a construct of modernity. But you are using the state in a sense of all of the political units of, um, uh, of, of, of pre-modern times. So would, the, would these include the city-state, the kingdom, the empire? Exactly. So uh, precisely that. So uh, we could uh, use the word, the term state, in the modern mm -hmm. state as national state and we could use it as pre-modern mm -hmm. state. So pre-modern state could be of three type you have mentioned uh, already. It could be uh, city-state, mm -hmm. the, the, the smallest mm -hmm. uh, form of political organization. There could be kingdom that is a kind of confederation of the city-state or territorial state, and that could be empire as unification of, of the kingdoms 
uh, integration of the different kingdoms, as Roman Empire, for example, or uh, the Empire of Alexander the Great, uh, but also that there could be ethnic form of proto-state in uh, ethnokinetic uh, ethno groups of uh, pastoral societies, or Dorfstadt, uh, the term of uh, village state. So it is a kind of uh, organization, uh, democratic, uh, as usual, uh, the organization of the uh, settlers and the village. But uh, it is not real state, it's proto-state because we are now in pre-Laos uh, mm -hmm. situation. But uh, the term state could be equal to kingdom, to um, city-state, police, or to empire. Uh, and I have one last question. When we're speaking about the facet of religion, uh, we defined in the ethnos, the, um, the bearer of, uh, of the ethnos itself was the shaman. And uh, he was uh, the personified form of religion in the ethnos. And in the um, Laos, we talk about the come into the picture. So, uh, uh, I think that um, uh, the polytheism or priesthood mm -hmm. in the monotheistic society mm -hmm. could be considered as a kind of reappearance of the shaman figures. The, uh, the priesthood, it is not prophets. The priests are not uh, prophets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are a kind of reappearance of the ancient shaman tradition in the completely new new sociological uh, societies. So uh, maybe mm, mm, polytheistic, polytheistic society could be partly uh, forms of this local shamanic tradition and polities of Greek type or Hindu polytheism is precisely such because the pre-Laos forms of ethnic groups conserved their local cults with shamans in the center of that. That is obvious. And they formed a kind of local polytheistic tradition mm -hmm. recognized up to certain level on the unification level, but also we could consider that uh, different uh, shaman types were also embedded in the state religion up to the uh, certain moment, because in the state, and polytheistic state, most important historic aspect is the state, the state and the hero and the warriors. Mm -hmm. They could tolerate and they tolerated up to the certain moment, reappearance of the shaman as a kind of messenger mm -hmm. from the ethnos, from from the, mm -hmm. the law, and that, that is well, that was possible a kind of dialogue between mm -hmm. them. And uh, there is the theory of Hidar Jamal, uh, modern Russian philosopher, that considered uh, that um, priesthood in the uh, monotheistic society was a kind of return of the shamans mm -hmm. and the, the priests are enemies of the prophets the prophets were were purely monotheist mm -hmm. so consider transcendentality of the god uh, before all other mm -hmm. all other consideration and for shaman there could not exist transcendence they repair Immanence, mm. the absolute immanence and self-sufficiency of uh, self-sufficient uh, existence of the society. So we could also uh, regard monotheistic religion as a kind of internal struggle between prophetic uh, line and priesthood line. And for Gedar Jamal. Uh, Islam precisely is pure monotheism because of the lack of the priesthood mm. and the priests or 
semi-priest in as mullah or Sufi or other uh, his Aitallah uh, religious mm -hmm. authorities are considered by Jamal as a kind of shamanistic uh, re revisionism inside of Islam. So that is also Wahhabit mm -hmm. and Salafit position. So uh, uh, they consider Islam to mm -hmm. be purely monotheistic, purely mm -hmm. Laos, based on completely uh, on, our, uh, on, on the uh, on the stopping mm -hmm. of any existed links with the ethnos. So for Salafi and Wahhabi mm -hmm. tradition, ethnos is a kind of shaitan, mm -hmm. or, or a kind of devil. Mm -hmm. And so a uh, reintroduction of the shamanist mm -hmm. traces in the context of religious society uh, is considered to them as a kind of blasphemy. It's a very interesting way of looking at it, particularly when we take a look at orthodoxy, uh, um, particularly Russian orthodoxy, and one of the, I would say, uh, important distinctions between orthodoxy and Western forms of Christianity is... Marriage of the Popes. The, uh, marriage of the Popes, but also the, the, the Vai uh, Varia, the mm. existence of two faiths where orthodoxy mm. has a many more characteristics of the original folk religions uh, perhaps uh, than uh, Western Christianity does. Yes, uh, we could consider that uh, Eastern Orthodox priests are more priests than prophets, prophets. Uh, and the, the uh, possibility for them to merge, to have uh, ma uh, to, uh, children, that is the sign of more ethnic attitude mm. to them and the pro prohibition for mm -hmm. the uh, clerics of um, Catholicism mm -hmm. to, to be married is a kind of um, uh, putting them uh, beyond mm -hmm. the uh, normal conditions mm -hmm. of, of the ethnic uh, uh, eternal return through the descendants. Thank you very much. You told about that about the Laos uh, uh, as the social reality that con uh, con consists from two entities. Uh, one entity is the uh, conservative uh, entity that uh, um, coincides with ethnic society and the uh, upper level that coincides with the um, uh, that uh, with the elites and uh, you see you know, that between these entities is uh, in the Laos condition there are struggle any time in intellectual and so sociological levels and so on. So, uh, for example, of course in the ethical, because uh, uh, we can see that uh, the Laos is the place where the two ideas of violence are born, because the good violence and the bad violence, bad violence for the ethnos, because they conquered them, they uh, killed almost uh, all the man population or, or so, in, for Enslaved. example. Enslaved enslaved somebody so this is the uh, the uh, this part of the society um, holds idea of violence as the bad violence and uh, for the elites there is a good violence because these uh, uh, savage people they are so so nasty and so on they 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 had to be conquered uh, to make them the good ones from them and to enslave them to 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 preserve uh, the spreading of the evil, for, for example, something like that. So there are two ideas of uh, the violence are born. But uh, I'm not asking about, not about the violence, but the eschatological problem, because um, in my opinion, uh, if we can go th further, uh, there must be two eschatological ideas. Uh, one idea from the ethnos, and this is a uh, eschatological idea about the freedom because they were conquered. And the other eschatological idea from the uh, past nomads and uh, the, the, past, uh, the pastoral society. Thank you. Strictly speaking, uh, eschatology could be uh, attribute only of the elite because eschatology uh, presupposes existence of the actual time, precisely. The time that is going to some end. 
So it is open time or historic time that consists from events. And every event is in the depth the issue of the struggle of the hero against the death. Mm -hmm. And the aristocratic conception of the eschatology is the final victory of the hero over the death. So the disappearance of the death in the process of the real conquest of the hero over the death. So that mm -hmm. is a messianic mm -hmm. way to any aristocratic society to understand the time, the history. The history should end because there will be time when the hero will be able to conquer, conquer will defeat the death. The death. The, 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 the defeat the death. Con defeat the death and conquer also. Mm -hmm. Conquer the realm of the death. So, mm -hmm. to, uh, will be able to make the death disappear and to install its heroic kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, it could be represented in a religious way as messianic vision and the victory over the death by the savior, but the warrior who is struggling against the death may be desperately for, for some time, up to the end of the time, but finally he will win once. So that is a kind of eschatological vision with a certain point before, in the future. This very important uh, point that is end of the time because the time is the death and end of the time is the victory of the hero over the death. So it is mm -hmm. concrete eschatology. But the mass has not eschatology because uh, the mass ethnic group is not yet open to the time. If it opens to the time, it will be a lit heroic. So it is close to this actual time. It lives in the eternal return, but ne uh, when that doesn't exist uh, the end. So that could not be eschatology for the masses in direct mm -hmm. sense. So because uh, the freedom could not be a real goal of the masses, because the masses doesn't understand the fact that they are conquered. So it is very important the slaves exist only for the masters, for themselves, for themselves the slaves are not slaves, because their consciousness, original consciousness, their original consciousness is uh, under pressure of the consciousness of the masters and because they use the consciousness of the masters but that is masters consciousness and not the slaves so the slaves don't understand don't recognize themselves as slaves because naturally they don't have this concept in them ethnos don't doesn't think in terms of the master-slave relations. Mm -hmm. But it is a very special procedure, uh, not natural, because uh, for uh, accomplish such a shift on consciousness, we need at least to read very carefully Capital of Marx and many other texts. And try, we, we need to try, uh, we need to understand them. Uh, and it is not easy task. So, uh, but that is very sp specific. In the normal situation, the ethnic groups cannot understand, identify where and who the slave is. So they are not slaves. Uh, maybe their animals are slaves, and they or they women are slaves. Mm -hmm. If they if they uh, accept 
master-slave vision of the aristocrats. But in the normal situation, the relations of in ethnos in the masses without using of uh, the uh, without using of the um, uh, aristocratical form of consciousness, they uh, don't consider ethnical groups consider women as their property or slaves. They mm -hmm. consider to be equal. So ethnic attitude to genders is much more balanced and much more uh, progressive than in modern society, where there is a kind mm -hmm. of asymmetry. But but what, roles. but what uh, do the uh, uh, lower parts of the society in the Laos, in the Laos uh, uh, state, what do they think about the conquerors? That is uh, the last point. They consider to be sacred. Sacred. So they, uh, the kind, uh, 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 they accomplish sacrifice, sacrifices for them. So mm -hmm. the the work for the masters, it is conceived by the masses not as the work for some um, conquerors, but it is a kind of ritual action to satisfy the inner self of the ethnic ethnic spirit. So they are the spirits, the death. Of, uh, the, the political elite is uh, the dead, dead uh, who are living inside of the circle and they demand sacrifices. sacrifices. And uh, that is taxes. They pay for them, uh, a, a tribute for them in form of taxes as uh, sacrifices.